Welcome to Clean My Mac. Today in this video I'm going to talk to you about my five favourite things that uh, you can do with this particular software. I'm actually quite a sceptic when it comes to this sort of software. I think that the speed benefits that they maybe claim are really things of the past and a lot of the time it's just not necessary to have this sort of uh, file removal and file cleaning happening all the time. I have a MacBook that I've been using for five years plus and it's never had anything like this done to it and it runs just fine for what we use it for. Firstly, under the system junk section in cleanup, well, this is just your standard sort of cleaner and that's good in itself but it does a little bit more than that so I'll do a scan on this now. It's found 67.3 megabytes to clean up so I can review the details there. That's just a bunch of stuff around user cache files, system cache, language files, log files, that type of thing. It usually finds that sort of stuff and you can clean those up. But the first thing on my list is this little section here at the top, which isn't selected as standard. This is the universal binary section because, of course, software companies are now having to push two code versions into their apps. They're having to do a sort of Intel compatible one and an M1 compatible app. So you end up with two binaries that take up a load of space. So in this case you can see here that I've got a Google Chrome extra binaries taking up 336 megabytes. I only need the M1 version of that on this particular uh, computer so why not get rid of it? Well I will. And Logic Pro don't need the extra binaries for that. I'm not going to do them all now. Well, in fact, I'll do the Camtasia one down there. I'm not going to do them all for now, but you get the idea. So what you can do is you can clearly see those universal binaries and get rid of the ones that you don't need. So let's do that cleaning now. And there we go. Simple as that. Item number two on my list is under the privacy section. So I'm going to do a scan for privacy now. And you can go down the different sort of browsers and areas where privacy are necessary and you can do a quick reset of all your kind of full disk, disk access settings, your camera privacy settings, all that type of thing. You can reset them to their defaults and get rid of ex any extra permissions that you might have put in place in the past. Of course apps that you go into if they need those permissions will re-ask you for them so it's no big deal if you do this by accident. I'm not going to change anything there however what I do like is just the simple browser information removal. So here I mean there's not much in here at the moment because I've tested this before and I've run a session but you can easily clean out your browser of all its uh, unwanted items directly from this one bit of software which for Safari is good because it's not always as clear where you do that in Safari and I think you can't sort of split the stuff out. You kind of clean it or you don't. You know, you just say remove all privacy stuff and it just deletes everything. It doesn't give you this uh, broken out view that you get from this software. So that's my second item that I like. Third one comes under the optimization section. So I'm going to view the items that it has for optimization and this just gives you startup items effectively, launch agents as it calls them. The items that will start up when your computer starts up and sit running in the background all the time. Now you again you can check this sort of stuff within Mac OS itself anyway but this gives you a more comprehensive list. It really breaks stuff out and you can then just disable or enable any of those as you wish and uh, yeah I think it's just a nice place to get a detailed list because I for one, under my under the macOS settings, I've never seen these Google software update agents before. I've never seen any of this stuff here, even though they are disabled at the moment. But this seems to give you a more detailed list than I have seen in the past. The fourth item is the uninstaller section under applications. This just gives you a central place to remove all your apps because removing apps and removing software on a Mac is pretty straightforward anyway. Most of the time it's just a case of dragging the application into your bin and that's pretty much it. So it's much much more straightforward than uninstaller software that you get on Windows. 
However, there are occasions where it leaves folders and files behind in other areas. So it doesn't just create a simple application folder that has the binaries in and all related software and files. It also puts some stuff somewhere else. And that's what this looks at. And it goes into a little bit more detail around that. So for example, here, I've got a leftover section. I've recently removed a few items from here. And I can see, look, I've got three items that have left something extra behind, even though I have dragged them into my bin. So let's just remove those items. And that's, that's taken care of those. So if I go back to those now, I should, yeah, so I don't have any leftovers before, but I can also just remove stuff from here as standard. So let's find something that I'm happy to get rid of on here. Okay, so I'm gonna sort them by name ascending and I'm gonna get rid of this system test light. So let's just do an uninstall. And that's it, that's got rid of everything relating to that software. Hopefully also the leftover stuff. Yeah, good, I've got no leftover stuff in here. And the final item, the fifth item on the list is the updater through applications. Well, there's nothing to show in here at the moment because I don't have any uh, apps that or so software that needs updating, but this effectively just checks everything you have on your system and says, right, this, this, and this have an update available and you can do it all within the software. And I tried it and it worked perfectly. It just updated it within a few seconds, didn't go into the software, didn't need to go into the website. It just grabbed everything it needed and did the update. So being able to do that from one central point is really good too. But as I say with any of this sort of software, if you're willing to put the time in and just mess about a little bit more, you can do all this stuff yourself. Mac OS is excellent as far as where files are stored. It's a Unix based system and you can go into it. You could write a, a script that could just get rid of all the stuff that's relevant for your machine and, and do it all manually. But I guess the benefit here is that it does it all simply through a really nice interface. So whether it's worth the money, well, maybe it's not. But for me, I managed to get this for about £55 for a lifetime license for this uh, system. So I think that's worth it. £55 to have this as an, on an ongoing basis. I think that's not, don't think that's a bad price. I think the 125 or 128 they were originally advertising on that screen is too much. That's too much for this software in my view, but let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks very much for watching. This is not a sponsored video. I paid for this software myself. I don't have any codes to give you or anything like that, I'm afraid, but thanks for watching and I will see you soon.